Hydro, 284.63. Yeah, we have to pay that. Rent, of course. After we open. I've told them a thousand times. They'll telephone. No, not Bill. They'll disconnect our phones again. Good. All they do is ring any way you pick them up. It's people wanting money. I can't run a theater without a telephone, Jeffrey. There were no phones in ancient Greece, and their theaters did very well. You're not taking this very seriously, Jeffrey. We're hanging by a thread. And the very best things happen just before the thread snaps. I thought you would have learned that by now. Case in point. I just fixed the toilet. You're a genius, Jeffrey. Break's over. We're back. Good news. I have fixed the toilet. And as a reward to myself, I would like to run the storm. What do you think, Andy? Go for it, man. Go for it, man. These are the words a director likes to hear. Andy has been working on the lights now for three days and three nights. He assures me there will not be another fire. Andy, the storm, please. Now, Cheryl seems to believe that a theater needs phones. I disagree. A theater is an empty space. And as per the 400-year-old stage direction, we begin with a tempestuous noise of thunder and lightning. It is a storm of color and sound, a dense, unnatural storm. And we see it in glimpses, in flashes, as Miranda would have seen it. We see fragments of the horror, and our minds provide the details. We see the crew struggling to save the ship. Alonzo, Sebastian, Antonio, run below deck. Let us all sing with, with our king. king, Antonio cries. The bosun calls out, take to the topsail, lay her a hold. But the ship is torn apart by Prospero's magic. The mechanism of his revenge is set in motion. We're split! We're split! Farewell, my wife and children! All lost! All lost! The lights churn and swell like the sea! <laughs> and nuts. Take five, everybody! Chin up, Hamlet! Chin up, Hamlet! Put up your melancholy dine! So your uncle is a cad who murdered dad and married mum. That's really no excuse to be as bum as you've become. So, so wise up, Hamlet, rise up, Hamlet. Park up and sing a new refrain. Your incessant monologizing fills the castle with ennui. Your antic disposition is embarrassing to see. And by the way, you're sulky, Brad, the answer is to be. <laughs> you're driving poor Ophelia insane. So shut up, you rogue and peasant. Grow up, it's most unpleasant. Cheer up, you melon. Holiday. How long can a man stare at sheep? If he's a shepherd, there's no telling. Oh, really, Cyril, there's gobs of work to be done. I know, Ducky. I know what it is. I can't hear anything. We oiled the casters this morning. No more squeaks. I'm not talking about squeaks. I'm talking about bleats. You do want the bleats. Of course I do. What's the point of having sheep if there's no bleating? Where's the charm in that? That... Without the bleats, there's no irony, Maria. Any fool knows that. I'll cue up the bleats. Yes, cue up the bleats, for God's sake. Honestly. There you are. Now that's comedy. Thank you, Maria. You just saved our fourth act. Oliver! The forgeries of jealousy? Yes. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, you promised you would reblock it weeks ago. Weeks ago, you promised. Yes, I do have some other notes from last night's. Pre My back 
is to the audience for the love of God. I'm not being unreasonable. I'm not saying I'm the most important here, but arguably at that moment, act two, scene one, the forgeries of jealousy. I am the most important character on stage and I can't be seen by the audience. She's am I being always like this. Am I? She can't make it through a rehearsal without throwing a tantrum. It's on the list, darling. I promise you. Hi. Sorry, everyone. Sorry for caring. Right. But her back is to the audience. What next? What next? Kate. Yes. Oliver? Are you free? I'm doing notes. Can I get you for an hour? It's about the seating plan for tonight. An hour? Oh, by the way, great feedback on the previews, everybody. Break a leg tonight. Oliver, we'll use your office. Well, we are in good shape, really. Maria, let's do a line run and let them go home early, shall we? We'll begin with the forgeries of jealousy, for Ellen's sake. Okay, everybody, gather for a line run. Hey, are your parents coming tonight? Are you in the playoffs? Not a chance. Do you know who is coming? My high school drama teacher. Yeah. I'm kidding. I nearly freaked when I heard his message. I mean, all the girls were in love with him. He used to wear these black turtlenecks and give massages and talk about breakfast. I'll take my advice. Thank him for coming and dump him. You can't schmooze with him hanging around your neck. And, uh, light up? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer's spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or me. What is the problem with the seating plan? Well, it's not done yet. Well, it's as done as it can be, isn't it? What does he expect? Uh, and then there's the wine. It hasn't arrived yet? Not yet. How long can it take? I can see the vineyard from my office window, for God's sake. Well, apparently they're having trouble tracking down enough of the 99 Chardonnay. <sighs> Tell them I'll accept the 98 Sauvignon Blanc, but don't let them sell you on that dreadful reasoning they served at the press launch. It's like drinking chilled German urine. Right. You know, there was a time when I could actually rehearse the actors on the final day of rehearsal. Yes. Jack Cruz, agent on one. Thank you, Anna. Gary! Mr. Glickman will be right with you. Can I... Every time he calls, I'm put on hold. Every single time. Do the phones work differently in L.A.? Is that it? Are you forced to make two calls at once? I need six more for Lenstrix. Six more? This is getting ridiculous. There's no room. We have to make room. They're our major corporate sponsor. And we're very grateful. They're in the lobby, they're on the program, they're on the back of the tickets. Oliver. We're sold out. Well, who's this? Actors. Michael Jerning, wife and child. Trevor McKinnon, wife and mother. Actors? Actors do attend the theater every now and then, Richard. They've been in the company for over 20 years between them, but there was nothing for them this season. It was a, a gesture, you know. Bump. You don't understand. I've directed them in the dream three, four times. Trevor, he was my bottom for years. And they can have tickets for any other performance. Bump them. No. No. Still holding? Yes, I am! You don't understand, Richard. No, you don't understand, Oliver. We cannot afford to alienate our leading corporate sponsor just because you're feeling sentimental. Well, someone is going to get alienated. And I would prefer that it were Fred from accounting and his prostitute companion than two men who have devoted their lives to this theater. I have to go. To Lenstrix, actually. They're having some sort of crisis. Look, Oliver, find me some seats, please. And, you know, I wish you would think of this place as a place of business. Because that's what it is, you know. It's a business. When's Jack arriving exactly? Wonderful. We're all very excited. Uh, I'll have a car and meet him at the airport. What was the flight number again? The Chardonnay has arrived. Oh, excellent. Bring me a bottle, would you? Can't you see I'm in a wheelchair? I'm not. Get 
get your hats off me. David, we'll be with you in a minute. Can I get you anything? Coffee? Uh, juice? Oh, uh, yeah, juice would be great. Catherine, why have I been called here today? Oh, Jim, would you like apple, orange, or grapefruit? Orange, please. Sorry to keep you waiting, Richard. David, how are you? Good, good. Well, I uh, can't stay. Huh? Well, well Lenstrex is going through some changes. Yeah, so the... Ms. Day here is from our new head office in Houston. She'll be assuming my responsibilities. Hi, Ellie Day. Don't bother making any jokes. I've heard them all before. <laughs> Richard uh, Smith-Jones. David, I... I have a thing I have to attend to. Uh, goodbye, Richard. It's been a real pleasure working with you. Oh, bye, David. He's just gonna love me and courage. Uh, Miss Day? Holly? David and I have been working together for quite some time now. Yeah, I, I know. Three years, I've been through his files. Then you also know about the 8.3% increase in our audience attendance? The inclusion of more modern language plays? This year we have Jack Crew playing Hamlet? He's a major American star. And David has been instrumental yeah, in... Yeah, yeah. No, David, David was a wonderful man. Miss Day, I have to tell you that the festival absolutely depends on the financial support of Lenstrex Okay, it's cosmopolitan and... Lenstrex now. <clears throat> Richard, please, I'm a friend. <laughs> Come on, sit down. <laughs> I am interested in new Burbage, very interested. In fact, I called you here today to discuss increasing our level of sponsorship. Seriously? You have a show opening tonight? Uh, yes, Midsummer's Night's Dream. Midsummer Night's Dream. Good. I'd love to see it. Is there a seat available? Well, David's, I suppose. Great. Well, I wonder if I might also go as your date. You know, just give us a chance to chat. Of course. I'm sorry if I appeared uh, a little defensive just oh, now. Oh, please, you're not the first, believe me. People are frightened by change. Personally, I've never, I've never understood that. I mean, change and opportunity, it's sort of the same thing, really. Don't you think? <laughs> I know we're behind with the rent. Two months, two months you have not paid. I ask you many times, you must leave. Sorry. After this show opens, we will pay you from the box office. No, no one comes to see shows here. Never. You leave building or I send for police. Thank you. Hi. No. I do not want any trouble. You are crazy. Please. He's not crazy. Not anymore. You attacked me with a knife. Oh, that was a prop. You attacked him? I took two steps toward him, but I immediately apologized. Jeffrey, he's evicting us. You owe two months. I am not a bad man. I have a family. Get out. Thank you. We're opening a new play, and we will pay you from the box office receipts. No one comes to see shows here. <sighs> All right. I'm fine. I will pay you out of my own personal account. Two months rent plus one month in advance is $12,600. And here you are. This ought to keep your family quiet. This check is good? Of course the check is good. Why would I give you a bad check? If check is bad, I send for police. Thank you. I have never bounced a check in my life. If check is bad, I send police. Check's bad, isn't it? Of course. Oh, God, why do you do these things? The police are going to come and shut us down. Ooh, little threat can't take much more, can it? Don't bother to cover up. I'm gay. <laughs> I just wanted to say break leg to you all. Relax, find your light, say the right lines in the proper order and everything will be fine. Remember what Sir Ralph used to say. Acting 
is merely the art of keeping a large group of people from coughing. <laughs> Good, sir. Don't bother to cover up. I'm old. Just want to say good show, break a leg and all that. Just find your light, say your lines, and if you get nervous, remember what Sir Ralph Richardson said. Acting is merely the art of keeping a large number of people from coughing. <laughs> so... Uh, Mr. Wells. Oliver, have a good show. Uh, thank you, but uh, you had a note for me. A note? Yes, uh... This afternoon in rehearsal, you had a note, but you were called away? Oh, your entrance in Act 3. Yes? It's good. You are saying, and I, in a consistently funny way. Keep it up. How was it? Uh, Mr. Wells, um, I've been meaning to tell you something. I saw your Hamlet with Jeffrey Tennant. I was 12. It, it was so great. I'm sorry. Everyone says I shouldn't mention it. No, you shouldn't. Break leg. Thank you. Another one, eh, hey, Ellen? Your sixth Titania, if I'm not mistaken. It's my tenth dream, you know, number ten. A bit of a nightmare, if you ask me. I'm just making the rounds, settling the butterflies. <laughs> Still using Sir Ralph, I'm afraid. You'd think I'd have some witty remark of my own to share after all these years, but no, I do not. Oh. You know, young Kate just stopped me in the Put hall. Put that down. Such a long time ago. Well, look at my hair. It's also ridiculous. Forgeries of jealousy. What? I begged you to reblock it. You did not. And tonight I will perform it, and no one will see me or hear me. Oh, they'll see the sheep, and they'll hear the fucking bleats loud and clear. You're overreacting, Ellen. You're obsessing on the detail. <laughs> when did you stop caring about the details, Oliver? Do you remember five? Well, I'm sorry, but I still fucking care about them because I'm fucking one of them. Ah, oh, Oliver, the minister's pulling up. Oh, the minister, yes. <sighs> Excuse me, Ellen. Have a good show. See you at the bar. Knock! Sorry. Sorry. Uh, come in. Sorry. Nerves. Welcome, Madam Minister. Hello, Oliver. My husband was easy to come after all. Can you squeeze him in? Of course. So glad you could come. The bar? Well, it's just over there, but we do have champagne. That's Oliver Wells uh, with the Minister of Culture. Oh, okay. He's the artistic director? Yeah. Oh, so you're the general manager, he's the artist, you're the businessman. Well, uh, I advise Oliver, yes. Oh. So, local wine? Uh, yeah. Do you like it? Mm, very nice. It's amazing. Grapes can grow this far north, isn't it? Mm. Two minutes, Alan. Oh, Maria? Maria! I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Stage left. Yes. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Center. Yep. Walk in his hops. Left again. No, upstage to the oh, tree. Oh, the tree, to the tree. Oh, shit, the tree, shit. Two minutes. We have two minutes. 
sorry. Sorry. A good show. Good show. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace there, that I may know the worst. Robert certainly behind the goal. Centers in front for Sundin. Back to the point. Camberley is shot in traffic. It's blocked by Phillips. Sundin with it again. Into the court. Damn quiet house. There's no excuse for a quiet house on opening. They didn't pay for their tickets. They could at least do us the courtesy of forcing a laugh. Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Igel break his mate with Ariadne and Anthony? Hear this stupid bleats. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For means to draw all this behind the wood. The production values are very high. Very diplomatic of you, Naomi. It's not one moment of truth in this whole production. Truth can be a very dangerous thing. Before I left Nigeria, I directed a production of Kensa Aoi was the Wheel, which was perhaps too openly critical of the Abasha regime. How did it go over? Well, the soldiers came and burned our sets and beat the actors with sticks. Thanks for the perspective. A switch to the hockey game, would you? Wait, turn it back. Switch back to the news. Jeffrey Tennant is not a criminal. It's just that he refuses to play their game. No corporate sponsors, no government friends. The real criminals are the people who are shutting us down. Sir, can you tell us why it is you're closing the theater? I am not a bad person. He is crazy. He writes bad checks. I have the family. Thank you. But, sir, the man says he's willing to do anything he can to keep this theater open. Would you care to respond to that? No one comes to show you. Jeffrey Tennant is best known for an incident that happened seven years ago when he suffered a mental breakdown during a performance of Hamlet at the New Burbage Festival. It signaled the end of his acting career. Madman or martyr, what is clear is that the artistic community is embracing Jeffrey Tennant as a hero of Shakespearean proportions. Reporting live, Lance Chilton. My God. Now that's theater. It reminds me of home. If we shadows have offended... Think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. Just for another 25 years is the best. Oh, I can't think of what part I'd play in 25 years, maybe one of the witches. <laughs> Nonsense. The passing years have been more than kind to you, my dear. It was... Well, let me just say, you're getting boring. Because you are never less than perfection. And as for the production itself, well, you have two choices. You can buy a paper in the morning or buy me a drink this evening. Oh, hello, Bazzi. I can't talk now. Everyone, wonderful job. Well done. The buzz is really good. See you all at the bar. Oh, and to all the new players, this is Basil. Avoid him at all costs. <laughs> You'll get a good review from me. Oh, oh, thank you, Basil. No, uh, you've got a style that, with age, I've grown to love. You don't make demands of the audience. You, you soothe them. The shows are comfortable, like an old boot. Thank you. I'd appreciate it if you didn't use the phrase old boot in your review. <laughs> I felt I really discovered Puck tonight. You're great. 
Oh, it's the audience. When you're doing a, a comedy, the audience does half the work for you. <laughs> oh, God. He's here. Who? My high school drama teacher, Mr. Stewart. All the girls had a thing for him. I'd hate to see what your gym teacher looked like. Mr. Stewart! Hi! <laughs> Kate! I can't believe you actually came. Oh, your debut. Oh. How could I miss it? Thank you. Um, this is Claire Donner. Hi. Puck. Pace, pace, pace. I'm sorry? You were marvelous. I'm so proud of you. Oh, well, Moth is just a small part. Oh, who cares? Look where we are at the New Burbage Festival. I've waited 20 years for one of my students to get here, and you did it. Oh, Kate, we made it! <laughs> oh, God, the dressing rooms. with you later, okay? He just, he has this thing about peace. I thought you were great. Whatever. It's the direction. See, Oliver isn't saying anything. He's just putting on the show. I've seen the show many, many times. And when I say that, I don't mean the dream. I mean this show. Luke. Another dreadful Riesling. Look for yourself. Oh, Lord. It's time for the speeches. Here's May Silverstone dragging her rotting carcass to the microphone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mm. if I might have your attention for a moment. Well, I see that we're all still a buzz from the wonderful production that we've just seen. What a delightful, delightful beginning to our 44th season. Mm. Thank you. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the man responsible for this evening, and I don't mean Mr. Shakespeare. <laughs> I am referring, of course, to our artistic director, Mr. Oliver Wells. Thank you, May. Since William is indisposed, I'll say a few words. I've directed many plays here during my time, and this particular staging of the dream was a dream to stage. You see, he's just going through the motions. I know, Basil. But I must single out one party for their invaluable contribution. I'm referring, of course, to the good people of Lenstrex, and specifically Mr. Donald Camposano, Camposani, sorry, Vice President of Customer Care, Western Ontario Region. Donald, could you tear yourself away from the ferries for a moment and step up here? On behalf of the Board of Directors of the New Burbage Festival, I'd like to present you with this leather-bound Riverside edition of the works of Mr. Shakespeare, signed by everyone, except the author, of course. That's the future of this festival right there. Thank you, Oliver. A sweaty middle manager soiling the works of Shakespeare. Lenstrex Corporation has a proud Shut up, Bethel. tradition of supporting arts-skewed commercial ventures like this. I believe it was the immortal bard who said, life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Well, we at Cosmopolitan Lenstrex disagree. Life, anyone's life, regardless of their race, well, I must find a new vice president of customer care, mustn't I? Yes, so? So, uh, tell me about the new gift shop expansion. Oh, well, it was like pulling teeth to get them to do anything. I mean, do you know when I showed up at this festival? They had a table over there with four t-shirts on it, all smalls, four pathetic t-shirts. Oh, my God. Now, 81% of the people who come to this festival go through that store, and 41% of them buy between 20 and $30 worth of merchandise each. Yeah. But has anyone ever thanked you for the added revenue? No. Not once, never. No. It's typical. Yeah. 
Now you might be thinking. I mean, they don't want to think of this as a business, but uh, okay. Hello. Hello. It's a business. Yes, exactly. I don't know where they think they get the money for the bills from. I mean, maybe it's from the fairies. Well, when I asked her this very question. Isn't funny, Richard? Thank you. Said that she put the top of the house. Well, Richard, I appreciate you. I think. Can I get you a better class of wine? Yes, but if you could only. Imported. Yes. That's no, that local shit knocks me flat. Uh -huh. Be right back. Okay. People of lesser vision. This feels unbelievable. I know, I still get shivers. Me too. I'm getting them right now. Mr. Stewart? Kate, I could do this, couldn't I? Do what? I could be an actor here. Oh, well, why would you want to do that? I mean, you're, you're just such a wonderful teacher. Teacher? <laughs> they kept me away from here, pimply little shits. They don't care about the theater, and I don't care about them. Do you know how I cast now? Tallest one's Romeo, the one with the biggest tits is Juliet. Who cares? You are drunk. <sighs> Not quite enough. Let's go. Where? To where all actors go. After the reception, to the bar. Richard Burton, Oliver Reed, Richard Harris, Peter O'Toole, they're all drunks. Oh, well. How could you not drink? How could you face the real world sober? After you achieve perfection on the stage. Here, here. Richard Burton. <laughs> Imagine saying to Elizabeth Taylor, I'm sorry, but this relationship is just not working for me. <laughs> 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 Reality must have been so incredibly dull for me. <laughs> so was Hamlet, you know. 1964. God, he was good. 66. Excuse me. Burton's Hamlet. 66. 64, I believe. John Gilbert directed. Burton's was the definitive Hamlet. No one's done it since, as far as I'm concerned. Well, except. There's Luke with the booze. Oh, Luke's been gone for hours. I think he left with Alan. Poor Ellen. He's trying to screw the ears off. <laughs> Massaging away your fear, setting her on the right track. On behalf of the festival, I'd like to thank you. Cheers! Hey, would you like to become an unofficial member of the company? Huzzah! Well, it's a very special honor we reserve for very dear friends. However, there is a bit of a ritual, though. Oh, I love rituals. Rituals are great. First, you must drink all the drags from every glass in the bar, and then you have to Just try and stop me. Oh, wow. He'll be out in ten minutes. Oh, you are evil. Thank you. He did the Hamlet. The Hamlet? Yeah, yeah. Back in the glory days. God, those days are long gone. Oh, God. Seriously, I could hardly keep my eyes open. Like, I'm slapping myself. It's Oliver. The guy's a hundred years old. Shh. 
Bible's heavier, so come on. He's old, and old people are boring. It's just the way it is. If they get too excited, they drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Put on your Track down something to eat. Do you want to come? Uh, no, I'm fine. Okay. Mm, more. Um, I just wanted to thank you for everything. I mean, I, I know you've been through this a million times, but for me, it's. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Oh, it, it was uh, magical. Jeffrey Tennant is not a criminal. God, I'm so fat. Why didn't you tell me I was that fat? The camera puts on 10 pounds. What about the other 25? <laughs> That's a lifestyle thing. These people are going to throw up all over my furniture. Why are they so happy? Anything. We just lost the theater. Are you kidding? You made them heroes. They love you. I love you. Sure. You know. Uh, is it because I'm fat? No, it's because you're drunk. No, I better get that. Hello? Did you know? There are three Jeffrey tenants in Toronto. Apparently, one of them is Jamaican. The other is 11. And that is you. It's Oliver, if you haven't already guessed. A ghost from the past. I wanted to tell you how proud I am of you. Chaining yourself to a condemned building to defend the right of the insane to put on shows that no one will ever see. Shit! Have mercy. I know you hate me. If you could see me now, you'd be happy. I'm pathetic. I am pathetic and miserable. I'm a failure. You're a failure. Why won't anyone talk to me? Ellen can't even look at my direction. How is Ellen? Uh, she hates me. She hates you. She hates herself. She's getting old. She's playing Gertrude. Oh, I'm sorry, I won't mention that play. Uh, don't hang up. How are you? Look, I heard about your mother. She's in a better place. God, you were so good. Incandescent. Why did you leave? Why did I leave? It can't be because of that thing with Ellen. We believed, remember, that greatness came with a price. That Hamlet that I brought out in you, it was... It was definitive. The, the, the Hamlet that you... A crime you only gave three performances. What a sin. It was only a play. Only a play. Mr. Chain himself to a warehouse. Everything I ever do will be compared to those three performances. You ruined my life. 
I ruined your life? You destroyed mine, you... You want to know why no one will speak to you? I'll tell you. It's not that you've ruined the festival, although you have done that. And it's not just because you're a sellout. You want to know why no one will speak to you? You want to know why Ellen cannot stand the sight of you? I'll tell you. So I do not have to think of you ever again. So that you will be erased from my memory. It's because... anything like this in my life. I have never felt anything even remotely like this feeling. <sighs> Bravo, Jeff. <sighs> Bravo. You were fucking incredible tonight. You broke my heart. And not just mine, I mean everybody's. Did you hear them up there? They were sobbing. Did you hear that woman, the one in the, the second row on the left there? She was wailing like, like she'd lost her child. Oh, but listen, listen, this is the thing. We've got to make it. Exactly like this. Every night. Every single night. Exactly like this. And how are we going to do that? Hi, there's the rub. Because anything else... It's just shit. You see what you may have done? You may have made for us a hell. A very well lit hell, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I want to do it again. Right now. And by heaven, I will make a ghost of him that lets me... I love you, Jeffrey. Oh, no, I want to feel you. <laughs> and I love you both very much. More than I love myself, which is saying a lot, believe me. I love you, Oliver. Hey! Let's make a baby. What? what? Not you. You. And you know what I mean. I mean one of those little bald people you're always fussing about in the mall. I want to make a baby with you. I want to make a little girl kind of baby, exactly like you. And I... I want to marry you, Ellen, because I love you. Please, such a flagrant display of unbridled heterosexuality. Jeffrey. Come on. Is this a... Yeah. <gasps> Come on. Right now. Where are we going? The party's just starting. We are going now to make a whole bunch of babies. And then tomorrow, we are going to pick out bridesmaids' dresses. <laughs> What's your size? Go, go! Goodbye, Oliver! Oh, don't leave me alone, you bastards! Not tonight! Jeffrey! <gasps> don't leave me here! I can't go back to the party! I don't like anyone! <laughs> Asshole. <sighs> Fuck. Sorry. Found 
için. Study. I can't go on tonight. I'm drinking with my buddy. I'm getting good and tight. Before they raise the curtain, I'll be higher than a kite. So call the understudy. I can't go on tonight. Tell the cast and crew to break a leg. Break a leg. I'll roll me out and up the bloody keg. Bloody keg. I need to ease the pain that life can bring. Life can bring. And liquor is what will hit the spot. The play is not the thing. So call me understudy. I think it's only right. My diction will be muddy. I'll ever find me light. Before the intermission, I'll be pissing on a sprite. So call me understudy. I can't go on. He can't go on. I won't go on. He shan't go on. I can't go on tonight. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>